I just received my Gold Shell CK Box 2 cryptocurrency miner. This device mines the cryptocurrency Nervos network, token CKB, and if CKB were to hit all time highs again, this device would generate income of over $5 per day. Today we'll review the setup and the specs of this miner. We'll compare this miner to the original CK Box and other CKB cryptocurrency miners. We'll analyze this miner's current profitability and review some different profitability scenarios I put together. And finally, I'll walk you through some of the pros and cons I see with this miner. Now to start off, I'm not affiliated with Gold Shell in any way, and I'm not being compensated to make this video. I purchased this miner with my own money and I'm going to try to give you a completely unbiased review of this miner today. And as always remember nothing in this video is financial advice. Now for the setup of this miner, this miner is a standard gold shell mini box miner if you're familiar with these. Gold shell has short tutorial videos online on how to set these up. It's very straightforward to do so I'm not going to go through that in this video. Now a couple things to note about this miner specifically. The miner I purchased did not include a power supply. I personally do not like using gold shells power supplies. I've had issues with them in the past and I just don't don't want to risk burning down my house for one of these devices. I personally like using the EVGA 1300G Plus power supply for my mini box miners. This power supply can be plugged into a standard US 110 volt outlet and you can connect multiple mini box miners to each power supply. I'll put a link for this power supply in the description if you're interested in picking one up. Now another thing to note is for this device you do need to connect two six pin connectors to power this device versus the standard single six pin for most of their other mini box miners. And once again this is very easy to do if you have this EVGA power supply. Next, this device cannot be connected via Wi-Fi. It only allows for an Ethernet connection at this point. I have heard that Goldshell is working on a Wi-Fi version for this miner, but I don't have an ETA yet on when that'll be available. But I personally like connecting all my mini box miners to Ethernet. I found the internet connection is much more consistent and reliable that way, and I don't have as many issues with my miners going on and offline. Next, let's take a quick look at my miner dashboard for my Goldshell CK Box 2. So for those of you who are familiar with these Goldshell mini box miners. This is their standard dashboard for uh, your miner. So you can see my miner has been online for several hours now and we're averaging at a hash rate average of 2100 giga hash per second. So it is fully operational and up and running at this point. Next we go to the miner section. A couple things I want to note here. They have introduced a power plan mode for this device. They have a full hash rate mode which is full power. They've also introduced a low power mode which will decrease your power output for your device but also decrease uh, your hash rate but it'll actually end up being much more efficient that way. Uh, we'll go through the profitability of each of those modes later in uh, the video. Another thing to note here is the algorithm settings. Uh, this is an ASIC device, so it's application specific integrated circuit miner. So it's a purpose-built machine and it only mines the Eagle Song CKB algorithm. So you can't use this device to mine different cryptocurrencies in the future. It's specifically made to mine the CKB uh, token. And then for the pool, I use DX pool for CKB mining. I've switched all my mini box miners over to DX pool over the last several months. I've been real happy with their dashboard and their integration and their alert system. I've had issues with several of the other mining pools over the last year or so. I did use pool in for a while, but then uh, I had a lot of my crypto that I had mined in the pool and wallet, and they actually froze withdrawals from the wallet, so I couldn't get my crypto out. And then I had to use F2 pool for a while, but I found their notification systems to be unreliable. So I've been very happy using DX pool, and that's why I've moved all my mini box miners over to that pool. If you want to try out DX pool, I'll put a link for them in the description below. So we want to quickly go over to my miner dashboard for DX pool. So I currently have two different CKB cryptocurrency miners. My worker one is my original CKB box, and then my worker two is my CKB box two. So you, right now I have my CKB box two on full hash rate mode. So it's hashing about two to the hash per second. And that's twice the output of the original CKB box. Now if we go over to the profits tab, you can see over the past month, uh, the amount of CKB units that I've been mining has been on a steady decline, and that's really driven by an increase in mining difficulty for the CKB network. Uh, there's been new CKB miners that have been much more powerful that have come online over the past month or two. Um, that's really increasing the mining difficulty, so it's decreasing uh, our mining output. So that's my DX pool dashboard. Once again, I'll leave a, a link for this in the description if you're interested in using this pool. Next, let's take a quick look at the Nervos Network token. So Nervos Network is currently ranked number 153 in terms of size of its market cap. It has a market cap of $191 million as of today, and it's priced at just under uh, 0.47 cents per token. Now, if we look at the CKB chart, you can see the token debuted at the end of 2019. It had uh, quite the run up in the 2021 bull market 
where it hit uh, just over four cents per token. And it's really come back down to that range where it uh, debuted in early 2020. Now, Nervous Networks is a proof of work cryptocurrency. So the network is secured by uh, its miners, similar to the way Bitcoin works. Next, let's look at the different competition of CKB mining devices. So this miner uses the algorithm Eaglesong. So I searched the Eaglesong algorithm and it shows here the list of different cryptocurrency miners that use this algorithm. So the big one is this new miner from Bitmain, the Antminer K7. It just debuted here in January of 2023. So if you look at this hash rate of this Bitminer Antminer K7, it's blowing out the water all these other gold shell devices and these other devices really what's really driving the unprofitability that we're seeing in some of these CKB miners uh, today. And that's why we're seeing an increase in mining difficulty across this uh, CKB network because you really are starting to see these K7 devices go online. So you can see here our gold shell CK box two is currently unprofitable at 11 cents loss per day. Now this is assuming a 12 cent per kilowatt hour electric rate. Uh, this device hashes at a 2.1 terahash per second, which is similar to what I was seeing on my dashboard today. At the full power mode, we're looking at 400 watts of power. If we compare that to the original CK box, you've got uh, basically a double in the hash rate and just under double uh, your power rate. So a little more efficient than the original CK box. If we go down the list here, these older CK gold shell devices and then these other uh, legacy CKB devices that really came out at the beginning of this network are currently very unprofitable when you compare to some of these newer devices here. Next, let's go over some different profitability analysis that I put together. We'll start off with the current profitability analysis. So currently you can purchase the Gold Shell CKB Box 2 from Gold Shell for $256. The current CKB token price is currently 0 0.0048 cents per token, and that's today on March 27th, 2023. So like I mentioned earlier, there are two different hash rate modes for this device. You have the low power mode and the full hash rate mode. Uh, the low power mode hashes at a 1.54 terahash per second. It has a lower power output of 260 watts and it is more efficient at a 0.169 efficiency rating and that's joules per gigahash. Uh, the full hash rate mode has a higher hash rate of 2.1, but you're using more power and you have a higher efficiency amount, so it's less efficient at 0.19 joules per gigahash. If we look at a comparison of the income and profit per day, uh, the low power mode currently, if we're assuming a 12 cent per kilowatt hour electric rate, you're generating income of 62 cents per day, electric expense of 75 cents per day. So you've got a loss of 13 cents per day on the low power mode. And then on the full hash rate mode, you're generating more income per day, but you're also generating a higher electric output. So your loss per day uh, increased to 31 cents per day on the full hash rate mode. So since this miner is currently unprofitable, uh, we really don't have a break even point at this point. Uh, the $256, since you are losing money each day at a 12 cent per kilowatt hour, our rate, uh, you'll never potentially break even at current prices, but that's really to be expected in the middle of a bear market uh, with depressed prices. The profitability of a lot of these miners uh, goes negative and really the only the, the newest uh, models, the most efficient miners uh, are really the ones that are going to stay profitable through a bear market. Now, if you're finding this analysis helpful, show me some support by hitting that like button. Thank you. So next, let's look at what the profitability of this device would look like if the CKB token went back to all time highs. So I highlighted here in green the amounts that changed from the previous analysis, just so we can follow along here. So the all time high price for the CKB token is just over 4.4 cents per token. And that was hit on March 31st of 2021. So almost two years ago today. And to hit that price, we'd have to see the CKB token increase 816% uh, from today's prices. Now, if we were to see all-time high prices for the CKB token, our income per day would increase dramatically. On the low power mode, we'd have income generating of $3.94 per day. And on the full hash rate mode, we'd have $5.37 per day. So after electric, you're looking at profit on low power mode of just over $3.19 per day. And then in full hash rate mode, we're looking at $4.21 per day. So if we apply those profits per day to our costs, you're looking at a break even on low power mode of 2.7 months and just about two months 
for the full hash rate mode. Now one thing to note, if we were to see all time high prices again, the mining difficulty would likely increase as well. So you probably wouldn't see such high income per day prices because people would turn their unprofitable devices back on again, increasing the network difficulty and decreasing your mining output. Next, let's look at what it would take for this device to break even on low power mode. So to do this, I'm assuming once again, a 12 cent per kilowatt hour electric rate, and we're gonna try to match the income per day for that electric rate so that it's break even. Based on my calculation, we would need CKB price to increase up to 0.0058 cents per token. So a 21% increase over today's prices to get that low power mode back to break even. So really not a big increase from current prices. Uh, we've seen CKB token fluctuate plus 20 to 30% daily uh, several times over the past month. So it's really not too far of a stretch from current prices. And then finally, the last analysis I wanna look at is what's the break even electric rate uh, to get this miner back to break even. So I did this calculation and what I found is to get this miner break even at current income generation per day, you're looking at a 0 0.099 cent per kilowatt hour electric rate. So just under 10 cents. Now, I know a lot of people in the US and globally, that is much lower than your current rate, but if you do live in a rural area or certain parts of the US, uh, that might be a rate that is available to you and it would make sense uh, to mine with this device. And uh, especially if your electric rate is lower than that amount. Next, let's go through some of the pros and cons with this device. We'll start off with the cons because I think they outweigh the pros currently. So the first con I see is unprofitability. Like I just mentioned, the device is currently unprofitable at an electric rate of over 10 cents per kilowatt hour. So it really probably doesn't make sense to run this device if you're gonna run it at an unprofitable level. And if you want exposure to the CKB token, it may make more sense to just purchase the token outright. Next con I see is competition. Like I mentioned earlier, there are new CKB miners that are coming out that are much more efficient and have a much higher hash rate. Unfortunately, we're probably going to see increase in mining difficulty over time, making these mini box miners more and more unprofitable. What we do need to see is CKB price to appreciate substantially to offset the increase in mining difficulty. But that once again will drive more people to mine. So it really is a vicious cycle. So the next con I see is no Wi-Fi. So you need an ethernet connection if you're gonna use this device. If that's not available to you, it probably doesn't make sense to purchase this miner. The so next con is the box miner unreliability. With a lot of these mini gold shell box miners, I've had issues with a lot of them going on and offline or just stop working completely. So that is a risk when you're dealing with these miners. I haven't had any issues yet with this uh, CK box two, that doesn't mean that I won't have issues in the future. And I have so many of these gold shell box miners and I've had issues with uh, quite a few of them. So that is a risk. I think a lot of these uh, devices may are poorly made or cheaply made. And that's why you constantly have issues with uh, these devices going on and offline. And then the final con is CKB's first halving is quickly approaching. I believe it's scheduled in November of 2023. So after the halving, uh, the total block rewards will be cut in half. So we really will need to see CKB's price uh, appreciate substantially to offset the impact of that having. Otherwise, these devices are gonna become even more profitable post that having. So next, let's go through the pros. The first pro I see is price. At a price point of $256, uh, that is a very low entry point, especially when you compare to a lot of the other mini box miners that Gold Shell provides or many other mining devices, period. But I think the low price is warranted given that this device is not currently profitable. Next pro is availability. Uh, I know this device currently is available on Gold Shell's website. You can also purchase this device from other resellers. But for warning, if you purchase from another reseller, they're almost always going to be more expensive than purchasing directly from Gold Shell. Next pro I see is that power flexibility option. I think that really gives you some flexibility to adjust your miner's uh, power output uh, to really reduce the unprofitability in times like this when the miner is unprofitable. So I think that's a nice feature that hopefully Gold Shell continues to implement here in the future for their devices. And the next pro is the upside potential. Like I mentioned earlier in my analysis, you're looking at at over an 800% return just to get back to all-time highs for the CKB token. So I think there's some 
you know, potential here to use this device as a speculative uh, mining play in your portfolio. Now the Nervos Network and the CKB token are a relatively new proof of work project, but I think it has the potential to be a big winner in the next bull market. That's why I'm excited to speculate on this project with the new Gold Shell CK Box 2 miner. Now this miner is not currently profitable, so I really can't recommend anyone purchase it outside of pure speculation. Now, if you enjoyed this video and this analysis, I think you'll like one of my other videos. You can check it out over here. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.